For improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects, look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to the latest PV newscast. Coming up this week, Q-cells taken over by bondholders, Spain stops solar subsidies, and we take a special look at the Asia-Pacific market. Struggling former leading cell producer Q-cells has in principle agreed a debt-to-equity swap deal with its bondholders to keep the company afloat. The deal, which needs to be approved by the shareholders, would mean the company could retain 304 million euros of liquidity and be almost debt-free, but bondholders would control 95% of the shareholding. The two-step debt restructuring plan previously announced by Q-cells was not accepted by bondholders, which suggests the risks of the company folding remained high. Q-cells will also be forced to sell non-core assets that could raise 200 million euros, which would be given back to bondholders on an equal basis. An asset sale could include its thin film operations, such as its Solibro subsidiary. For the first time, the US Department of Commerce has issued a finding ahead of the preliminary determination on duties. It's in the case brought against Chinese module imports into the US by SolarWorld, scheduled for March 2nd. In order to prevent a massive, evasive surge of Chinese solar cell and panel imports, the department has proposed that countervailing duties will apply to all imports of cells and modules from Chinese exporters that were brought into the US starting on December the 3rd last year. The department is scheduled to issue a separate preliminary ruling on anti-dumping duties on March 27th. The Department of Commerce will issue a separate critical circumstances ruling in the anti-dumping investigation. And separately, the US International Trade Commission issued a unanimous preliminary determination on December the 2nd, stating that these imports are harming the US solar manufacturing industry. What is today an energy problem could become a financial problem, the grave statement made by Spain's industry minister, José Manuel Soria. Spain has made the controversial decision to cease renewable subsidies for new solar wind cogeneration and waste incineration plants in the face of an ever-growing government budget deficit of 24 billion euro. The power system borrowings have been backed by the state, but it appears that revenue generated by state-controlled energy prices has not been covering the high costs associated with delivering the power, including the payment of renewable subsidies that have been put in place. The PV industry is at a crossroads, according to EPIA President Ingmar Wilhelm. Whilst European markets have always outpaced home production, this will presumably no longer be the case in years to come. Wilhelm's recent report on PV demand forecasts says new markets around the world will have to be opened up to drive PV development in the coming decade, just as Europe has accounted for it during the last decade. Though worded in a typically understated way, the EPIA drew attention to the need for China, the largest single producer of PV modules, to develop its own domestic market to support future industry growth. Large emerging markets such as China, the USA, Japan, but also Australia and India had addressed only a very small part of their enormous potential. They claim global PV installations reached 27.7 gigawatt in 2011. And finally, in related news, China has quickly emerged as the dominant force in the Asia-Pacific region, with 48% of 2011 demand. A planned year-end 13% fit reduction led to a surge in installations in the fourth quarter, reaching 1.7 gigawatt, according to NPD SolarBuzz. Other major markets in the Asia-Pacific region include Japan and India. Though dependent on the residential market, Japan installed 1.2 gigawatt last year, an increase of 30% over 2010. The researchers expected the Japanese market to grow 40% in 2012 as a new FIT law aimed at large-scale PV projects should increase demand, though highlighted that the actual 2012 rates have yet to be announced.
Solabuzz also claimed demand in India increased by 125% in the fourth quarter, as install deadlines loomed in the first quarter of this year. The market research firm expects 600 megawatts to be grid connected in the first quarter under the national solar mission and Gujarat solar policies. In 2012, the Indian market could begin to approach 1 gigawatt. Other emerging markets in Asia added 500 megawatt of demand in 2011, largely driven by Thailand, Korea and Taiwan. Further growth of more than 50% is expected in 2012 as new markets in Malaysia and the Philippines evolve. That's it for the news this week, but never fear, you can get your daily PV fix by visiting us at pvtech.org and follow us on Twitter at pv underscore tech. Have a good week and we'll bring you the latest news first again next week. Thanks for watching.